Well, it's the second day of the World Laureates Forum in the financial hub of Shanghai. This event gathers some of the world's top scientists, including a number of Nobel Prize winners. Chinese President Xi Jinping has welcomed participants through the video call. He has called for more collaborations in this field. Brain Science was the highlight of the day one. Before we get into that, let's hear what some science giants have to say of the forum. Uh, China is probably the only country able to host such a conference. Uh, the uh, challenges of bringing together 137 laureates of various prizes, as well as a very large number of other participants and young people, uh, is uh, a logistical nightmare and really almost impossible to accomplish. And yet, the uh, leaders of this effort in China have succeeded and done a brilliant job in the process. And scientists right now need to make a statement and say, science has no boundaries. We all need to be working together. Science is international. I became a scientist because we cooperate around the world. And so their message, which I very much agree with, is that we need to make sure science stays international, basic science, that we share observations. The pandemic, COVID-19, has been a wonderful example of that. We should be working together to battle this virus, not each country by itself. We're now joining us is my colleague Xu Mengqi in Shanghai. Mengqi, uh, what can we expect from today's events? Well, Yang Zhao, today, well, you know, there will be another marathon of speeches and parallel forums with topics ranging from green chemistry to biodiversity, from uh, medicine, uh, biology, to the origin of the universe. So, again, it will be a feast for curious minds. But today will be particularly exciting for young researchers as they'll have the chance to, uh, you know, present their work to leading scientists, to the laureates, and hear their advice on that. And this, uh, in this takes part in the so-called Young Sci Scientist Forums. These forums are set up as part of the um, annual events mission to cultivate young talents and to support the growth of youth. Yang Zhao? Well, well, this year our team from China Media Group will not only cover this forum but also organize a forum on the side called Sign T Conference. Can you introduce that to us a little bit more? Right, the science, the science Tea Conference or the Teens in the Academy Forum really is another reflection we were just talking about, um, but it puts all the emphasis on the, on the tea or teenagers as more than 50 students, top science students from all over China have been selected to participate. And they'll have, you know, they'll be hearing uh, the, the leading scientists sharing their research projects um, and sharing their personal experience growing up about their education. Um, so it really is a rare chance. But the luckiest of them all are these two besides me. This is Tang Jie from Xiamen, um, from Fujian province, and Wu Jintao, right, uh, from Shanghai. These two students will be presenting their own research projects to these leading scientists. How old are you guys? Um, I'm 17. 17? 17 too. <laughs> this kids will be the future of our society. Now tell us briefly what your speech, what your projects are about. Okay, so, so my speech in this evening was about um, two parts. The first is my research project, which is the accretion process of the Jupiter and Earth under the background of the movie Wandering Earth. And next I will talk about my own view about the um, interstellar travel or space travel. And that will be all of my speech. Okay. Wow. Jin Tao. Um, so I'm going to talk about why I like um, um, this, maybe the story between me and science. I'm going to introduce everyone why I like chemistry. And um, next, I'm going to talk about my own project, which is about electrochemical carbon dioxide reduction. And at last, I'm going to conclude my speech on what's us teeny. Well, it seems uh, we have some technical problems. Uh, but very, we are we're very welcome those young scientists to join us and maybe take it out groups going to reaching out to you. What amount of topics being discussed at this year's forum branches the amount of most engaging? 
one of the most sophisticated and complex structure on our planet, our knowledge of the brain is still very limited. One area which continues to frustrate scientists is depression and how it relates to the brain. Earlier, I spoke to a brain scientist about this, Annie, and she explained some recent breakthroughs in the research. I'm Hu Hailan. I'm a neuroscientist. I've been looking for the brain in the brain for decades. The years of research down scientists focus. They now zone in on a small area in the central brain that possesses bad moods, the lateral habenula. Inside a lateral habenula, in good running order, neurons transfer unpleasant moods to other parts of brain at a controllable speed by firing at spaced intervals. But in a depressive brain, scientists see a different scenario: erratic bursts of electrical impulses. Is that just a coincidence? To prove their theory, the team provoked the neurons in the habenula into firing and bursts using optogenetics, a pioneer technology that allows neurons to be activated with light. If we can use light to activate this electrical impulse, and see this behavior, we can see the relationship between the neurons and the electrical impulse. This experiment is going to unlock the secret of depression. Just watch. In just a short time, this little rat has shown increased depressive behavior, unlike its untreated companion who instinctively struggles when forced to swim. This one chose to give up. Anything that can block the firing and get the habenula operating as normal would eventually alleviate depression. Scientists think ketamine might fit the bill. 之前的研究，大家一般是将氯胺酮通过外周的注射，通过血液来进入到脑中，它产生的是一个全脑的影响，所以我们很难知道它究竟在哪个脑区当中发挥关键的作用。Uh, 在我们这个工作当中，我们就选择将氯胺酮局部的注射到外侧浆核这样一个脑区当中，结果我们就很惊喜的发现，在几秒钟之内就阻断了外侧浆核的粗状放电，在一个小时之内就改善了啊、uh, 动物的类似于抑郁的表情。Unlike the conventional antidepressant, which aims to improve your pleasant mood, ketamine does the opposite by blocking your unpleasant feelings. Understanding why ketamine acts so quickly. Will provide us the greater insight into the core mechanism of depression, and help us to develop the ketamine alternative that does not have the same side effect as the drug itself. But over the past few years, many countries, including the U.S. and Japan, have been seeking to further develop brain-inspired intelligence by launching national initiatives. China is also investing. So, what is brain-inspired intelligence? Generally speaking, this focus is on understanding. And simulating the cognitive brain and applying this knowledge to build up intelligent systems, including neural computation and neural robotics, to improve artificial intelligence. Just to name a few examples, Deep Neural Network, a popular machine learning algorithm, can simulate the information processing mechanism of the human brain to process data in complex ways. Another example is IBM's smart chip. Synapse, which is able to imitate the human brain's ability to understand its surrounding and make sense of complex data. In other words, the chip gives computers the ability to reason, just like humans. And besides that, many biotic products are equipped with cutting-edge nerve interface technologies, also inspired by brain mechanisms. And through connecting to the nerve endings of amputees' arms or legs, this Processes can detect signals coming through nerves to help control the bionic parts of their body. Well, back in March 2016, the National People's Congress approved the China Brain Project, a 15-year initiative. It consists of two major parts. First, it targets research into the neural basis for the human brain's cognitive functions, 
and that's the pillar of the projects. Also on the agenda are improving diagnosis and prevention of brain diseases, as well as advancing information technology and artificial intelligence projects that are inspired by the brain. They're known as two wins of the projects. So far, two research institutes have been set up. They are the Chinese Institute for Brain Research in Beijing and the Shanghai Center for Brain Science and Brain Aspire Technologies. Neuroscience is still a relatively new discipline in China, but the country has an advantage. As it hosts a large number of primate species, the country also has the wealth of brain disease samples, which provide valuable data for researchers. And that's our coverage for today. And tomorrow is the last day of the World Laureates Forum, but it promises to be just as engaging as the others. The focus will be on outer space, and then we'll have some discussion on the black hole and Mars. Be sure to tune in for that.